he was i think he's so stupid that he set set himself up, up for failure there so alex ferguson has left klopp has come in and he's left and they were able to transition smoothly and united are still in transition casemiro was at fault but then it's on manager to know the flaws of a player and still repeatedly put put him in the same situation is ten hag on borrow time yeah they are, I, we've been saying this since last season right nothing has changed is there anything positive <laughs> for united fans to look to at this point he keeps and, saying that you know they still pick up from last season apparently no, you know what he said say, recently gonna... uh, apparently was questioned Go. about like his current position and he said that only uh, pep has won more titles than ten hag since he's come here i mean that tells you about his mentality i think that's all you need he was i think he's so stupid that he set set himself up, up for failure there Exactly. Like he literally beat exactly. everybody up. He gave ammunition to everybody. Like you know, yeah, hit me because I'm a, I'm a stupid fuck. <laughs> That's what he did. You can say the same thing about some of the players as well, like Anthony, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he's a joke right now, and that's totally on him. Not yeah. just on the field performances, but everything else he has done. So when it comes to United, I really hope that they have a plan moving forward. What they are going to do with the new ownership, and I hope that what they have in mind is to just give one more year to Ten Hag. but they have something else growing in the background for the future if that is not the case if ten hag leaves and it's if they're going to start from zero again i think that is not at all a good look for united you know what i think i think basically manager is just one of the many things united needs to correct in order to become hmm. a good club or the way they are supposed to be and the reason why ten hag got this victory last season yeah i mean maybe they are under <laughs> this pr nonsense or pressure but if they won the fa cup now we can't sack him but i think also the larger thing is okay he's not the only problem in the team and first there's a lot of things going on but i think if you look at any of the different things in the past the two or three months he knows how much dysfunction there is at the end in terms of you know doom starting and so this and that So I think they're correcting things one by one, and I think they also kind of understand that sacking the manager is not going to be a one, one fix, one for everything that they are seeing. Right. So I think at that at this point of time, whatever Ten Hag does, it doesn't do. I don't think it matters as long as they have got the players. You know, they, they got good players. They, they have these companies and uh, you know Rashford, and you know they, once they kind of get all of these good people out of the system, I think they end up kind of address things one by one. What they're doing that, and I also hope that the Liverpool fans are not doing that. But We'll we'll see. I think that's it. because again he is definitely on borrowed time. He is going even if he achieves top four, even if he wins a league cup or something. I think he's going to go at the end of the season because I don't think they extend. Did they already extend his contract? For two or three years. I mean he's yeah. he's going to he's going to have like a yeah. See that's payout. what that's what see what we discussed earlier on this podcast was mm-hmm. that maybe the right move is to keep him for one more year and then mm-hmm. start making the necessary changes in the organization while right. he is given. an opportunity to perform for one more year right yeah. but then now they have offered that contract so now it makes no sense yeah. and you know what would be really yeah. funny if arne slot works out that means that like in the time since sir Fa- sir alex ferguson has left klopp has come in and he's left and they were able to transition smoothly and united are still in transition so that is going to that is a, that's an insane look for united i don't know what to say I personally believe it's a lot on Ten Hag. I mean, I echo your sentiment, Abhinav, that he, there's a lot going wrong at at the club. But then madness is doing the same things and expecting different results. And exactly. And you have seen with your club, you've seen with my, even the Chelsea dude. Like you know, with the amount of shit that they deal with as a fan base, you can see Maresca implementing a style of, or you can see what he's trying to do with Ten Hag. And a lot of people will shit on Casemiro today for the goals that the Liverpool uh, scored, and rightly so. Don't get me wrong, Casemiro was at fault. But then it's on manager to know the flaws of a player and still repeatedly put put him in the same situation, not giving him any support. So Casemiro and Kobe Mainu, both of them work together, or their capabilities co- should complement each other. But how it is set up is one of them goes right in front, or one of them stays back, and whoever is left back is completely isolated. And that's a systematic flaw. That's not a. I mean, it's a personal flaw, obviously. I mean, Casemiro is not Casemiro anymore. So don't get me wrong, I'm not making excuses for Casemiro here. But a manager, if 
he doesn't have the players needs to understand the flaws or the shortcomings of his players and then try to rectify them which i have seen him do at all like at all and it's painful for me for my united fans to uh, friends on this pod because this is absolutely disheartening to you know <laughs> see the same thing again and again like you know before a game that casemiro is going to make that mistake you don't have any players but you're doing nothing tactically to stop it from happening it's it's absolutely insane isn't it like no, your it, is, it is you know it back- is definitely insane sorry go ahead no no i was just saying your backroom staff or anything that's happening behind the club can not change it this is that he doesn't know what how to do it that's the only explanation no and the best part is it's all out there like everyone's speaking about it it's not like people of people are yet to realize like what's going wrong it's everybody's speaking about it so it just needs to be addressed at this point yeah you know the thing is they have so many problems to address right now it's just that they can't focus on which one because hmm. right now ratliff thinks that everything must change structurally not just on the fake because on field performance is a face of the club but the thing they see so much dysfunction behind them okay this is a bigger chasm which people are not talking about which I'm only I'm able to see which needs to be corrected than what's happening on the field because again as I said earlier the, the reason why slot is able to perform to the best of his abilities three games in is because everything behind them doesn't have to worry about all of the back end dysfunction everything yeah. else is set in stone for them he can just come in and just go, go right away and I think what the new owners I think ownership only changed like what six months Once ago, once they came in, I think they're seeing a lot of things, and they're like, "Okay, which problem do I focus on? There is so much, so many things going wrong all at once. Which fire do I put out right now?" I think that's basically is what giving Ken has more time. Even though I mean, I agree with all of the points AJ, but I think even though you can see that there is so much, you know, people just kind of going haywire on the field for a little bit, it's just that they see much deeper problems which need to be fixed first, addressed first, and then they'll come to Ken Hans, which probably, hopefully, will be the end of the season. I think. The only Long thing that continue. makes sense, only thing that makes sense, is that they gave that contract extension to Ten Hag just to maintain some stability, not to yeah. make it too obvious that he's leaving at the end of the season. So if that is the case, okay, sure. But then that still means, even if that is true, okay, maybe that is what's happening behind the scenes. Maybe they actually have a plan. Maybe they're making changes. But from the outside perspective, right? What else are we supposed to assume right now? I mean, we're seeing the same shit show for the third year. So <laughs> I mean, I'm happy. As I'm saying, long it may continue. I mean. I am I enjoy it every day but after a point it just becomes sad because if a noob like us can see the problems then, then it's just irritating that other people professional people can't see it. so I guess I mean we we'll just we we'll just live with it I guess I think that's the thing right I think the, the most disgusting feeling you can have As a, as a football fan, or as a you know, as a fan of your club, is that other clubs, your rival clubs, being feeling sad for you. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. can hate you, they can they can taunt you, they can just like you know give you shit about things. But if they're feeling sad for you, that's when you feel like okay, a Liverpool fan is actually thinking that okay, sacking Ten Hag. I mean, they can understand what's happening. I think that's actually based there. I think and it just shows how much of shit they're in. Yeah. I mean, we didn't even get a United player to join us today. 